One time, he was in the car with his mom and his little sister. We were taking the back roads through a little town called Summit, and and my mom was like, it was weird because she was like completely normal, like she could she could talk. I was kind of at a bad spot in my life, and I had just I don't even know what I took. I had taken a bunch of pills and. But the next thing I knew, it, I had lost all control. So I knew that I needed to stop the van and, and get out to protect them. So she pulled over at like the first exit in Summit and, we, and she's just like, let me walk around. And we got out and we started walking around into like this little riverbed and she just collapsed right there. And I mean, I was probably in like first grade. We were little, we didn't know what to do. We kind of just, my mom, I, I don't know, I can't even really explain what was going on, but she collapsed right there in the riverbed. Peyton and McKaylee walked to a neighbor's house to call their grandpa and so that they could get a ride. But I remember just watching those two little kids. run so fast to get help from mom. So he's definitely seen some things that no kid should have to see. Growing up, uh, both of our parents are recovering drug addicts. I talked Misty into coming to my side and, and we were together uh, in a bad place for about 15 years. So some people will look at it as a negative, but I always looked at it as a positive. Like, I am so grateful for the way I grew up, as, and as well as those stories, even though they were rough points. But like, just being independent, you know, like being able to, sh to know that I'm going to be OK through some hard times. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade my parents for anything in the world, because they taught us all the right things. And they always loved us. But I think Peyton you know, see the things, the choices that someone can make in their life can determine, you know, their destiny. And uh, Peyton, I feel like, has just taken every trial and the adversity that's been placed before him and used it to his benefit, to stay focused and to stay dedicated to, to his dream. I heard like maybe roll call in a class or something. They said Peyton Wilgar, and I remember like looking over. And I was like, oh. and instantly I was like, oh no, <laughs> I've been smitten for him since. We've been together since eighth grade, and we've really she's been by my side through everything. You know, through my family issues, through college. She's she's never left me through all the hardships. You know, as young as they were, see some of the things they do. Um, it's pretty impressive for for their age, you know. I mean, they've they've taken in some of my grandkids. So a few months into our marriage, Peyton's brother's kids were taken by the state because he was in and out of jail. My oldest brother, you know, and and, and his wife were just going, you know, through some struggles, some tough times. And my little brother Peyton and his wife Chrissy, you know, stepped up to, to take the kids in for a little while. You know, and it's it's pretty crucial years for him, you know, but they took that, <laughs> I don't know if you can say burden, but you know, they really opened their door. We didn't want the kids with anyone other than family. At one point they were, I think, in a random person's home and I would FaceTime them and it was just so heartbreaking seeing those kids, you know, just confused. They had no idea what was going on. And I have this one song that I still think about. It's called Don't Give Up On Me. And I listen to that song every single day, thinking about those kids. I wasn't going to give up on them. I remember that first night we just we, we finally got them to bed after them just crying for hours. And we put them in our room, and because we were so petrified to wake them up again, we both slept in the front room together. And we just sat there and we cried, like, what did we get ourselves into? Like, we thought it was gonna be, like, so fun, being aunt and uncle, having our little nieces and nephews around, but, like, 
when you switch into that parent role, I don't think anyone really understands how hard it is to, to bathe them and feed them and clothe them and give them 100% of your attention all day. And so it was, it was definitely an experience that I'm so grateful for, but it was extremely hard. So many players could have used um, everything going on in their lives, like Peyton has, as reasons to miss a practice occasionally, to leave early from a weight training session or, or show up late to a meeting. And you just don't have that with Peyton. Just shows a lot about who he is, you know, and, and his wife, Chrissy, as well. They're just great people. Our nieces and nephews have had similar struggles and trials as we did as kids. And you know, I think Peyton just wants to to make sure that they know that they're loved and put them in a situation to best succeed. Yeah, even though they do all struggle with addiction, there's nothing but love in this family. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I don't think he realizes the powerful son, brother, friend that he is. You know, he's always been a little bit hard on himself. and. He's definitely a light. And he, I, just, I just want him to love, love this year, you know. Play every game like it's your last game. This only happens once in a lifetime. And before you know it, you turn around and you're old. So you know what, take advantage of what you have now and love every minute of it and go out there and have fun. I just think that the future is very bright for Peyton.